Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, I'm back. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey everybody, good morning. Hi guys, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We need to have this serious chat. I wish teacher tag was more like actual tag, but that would be expensive. You'd have to fly all over the place and like. Um, so while I'm doing <laughs> while I'm doing this, it's Saturday afternoon. I have the entire neighborhood is upstairs playing and the beast is in the kitchen, which is just blocked by a piece of wood, because that's how we do it. So for those of you that are new to this channel and do not know me, my name is CJ Reynolds, and I run this channel, Real Rap with Reynolds. And I teach literature and the history of hip hop in West Philadelphia. This upcoming year will be my 13th year teaching, which has me pretty excited. Like it hasn't like, there's definitely, I don't even know if there's better years than others. All years have their tricky stuff. But anyway, that's beside the point. I'm still stoked to go back to school, but not yet. So I got asked to do this video by my friend Latonya from over at Smarty Style. Hey guys, I'm back and today we are doing another teacher collaboration. And it's one of these gigs where like, I answer some questions and you go to the next person's video and the next person's video and it's, and you get to hear a lot of different stories from a lot of different educators. As far as I know, I'm the only high school. So, so I got that going for me or against me, I don't really know. And this video is being done in connection with Teachers Connect. Teachers Connect is a new online platform that allows teachers to just interact with just other teachers. And, and the cool thing about it, and I'm not getting paid for this, so like, so I don't know if that makes my answer more honest or not, but anyway, this week I was on that platform and a woman posted a picture of her classroom and she was wondering what color she should paint it because she wanted it to be soothing to the students that were coming into her room. So I was able to like post a picture of my classroom, say this is what I did, here's some ideas. It's an interesting way to just connect with just teachers. And even as even if you're a first year teacher or you're just starting out, you can either get answers or you can add the wisdom that you know to help somebody else out. And I just think anything that's just trying to help teachers, I, I get behind because I love teachers. So let's get started. I have a bunch of questions I'm supposed to answer on this. Um, and I'm going to try and make them as applicable to you as I can. So it's not just me talking about like just cool stuff that I did or crappy stuff that I did or both. First question is, describe the first time that you realized you were becoming a better teacher. I remember that. I think what comes to mind for that question is, and this ties into something later, but when I attended Rowan University here in New Jersey, I had a professor named Dr. Jorgensen and Dr. Jorgensen implored us to not wait to become the teachers that we always wanted to be. Because she said, it's real easy to get stuck in a rut. And then three years in after you have tenure, you're like, you can't change, you're afraid to change. And so start off crazy. Being the, you know, the teacher that you, that you dreamed about being while you were in college. And so I took that advice for all it was worth and I created this lesson that I'll, uh, the short of it is, I created this lesson that kids were creating art projects in my room. This is for ninth grade literature class. We were creating the Harlem Renaissance Museum in our room. And so kids, everyone, every group got assigned someone from the Harlem Renaissance and they had to create an exhibit. And I had kids that were like making awesome stuff, like models out of clay, models out of mannequin heads and hair and wigs and makeup and stuff. One of my old students, Genesis, and her friend created a piano out of cardboard and then inset an actual piano keyboard into it so that it actually played music. And it was sick. As administration was walking around giving a tour of the school to someone, they walked into my room and I wanted to die. Cause it was like, it didn't look like we weren't reading anything, we weren't writing anything. The kids were laying all over the floor and on desks and we had music on from the time period and they were creating things and working together and using like hot glue guns and saws and nails and stuff. And I thought I was gonna lose my job. And so gentlemen came in, they walked around the room a little bit, they left. And one of my old students came over to me and she said, Reynolds, you know what they just said? And I thought, oh my God, I am terrified at what they just said. They looked around and they said, this is what a classroom should look like. And that was like the most empowering thing to me. I, I really think there's an importance to not hang on other people's opinions about what's going on in your classroom. Cause that can make you do things that you aren't comfortable with or that you don't think you should be doing or that aren't right to you. But at that moment it was, February of my first year of teaching, that meant a lot to me and it kind of did show me that I, that I was on the right path. Numero dos. The second question is, how important is ongoing learning to me as becoming a teacher? I just think it, it's important to me as being a human being. I mean, let alone a teacher. I don't read a lot of teacher books. I don't watch um, a lot of content online from other teachers. 
mostly because I'm just too busy. I have two kids and a beast, and it's like my wife works long hours. Like, look, I mean, let's cue the sad music. I'm at home by myself, taking care of my children and my dog. My wife works long hours, and I have to make dinner that's healthy and wash the dishes sometimes while I have off all summer. But I do love reading things that like are enriching to, that are just enriching to my soul. But I think the interesting part of that is I'm always, always looking for something that will, that will go back to the classroom. There's always something in everything I read that I think, oh, this would make a good lesson. This would make a good connection point. Oh man, that student said this to me last year. I was going through a similar problem. Now I have something to share with him. I'm always looking for those connections. Just like when I meet people, I'm always looking for like, how could this benefit my students? Or like maybe they could come and do an internship or we could do a field trip or you could come to my classroom. Like always looking for something to connect to the classroom. So it's extremely important to me. I think without that growth, you get stagnant and you become worksheet teacher and 20 years in, you're just handing out the same Xerox that you had you know, 20 years ago. And that's not fun and exciting. And if you're not excited about your classroom, the kids are definitely not gonna be excited about your classroom. Number three, how important were connections with other teachers, mentors to your success as a teacher? Were colleagues you found online helpful? So I'll say this. 13 years ago, colleagues did not exist online. You could go online and read someone's blog, which was sometimes useful. I never really found any that were like super helpful because I never found anyone that was like me that was putting out content online. Books were the same way, more so addressed these big giant situations. They didn't encourage interaction with the writer. You know, that's part of the reason I started a YouTube channel was to start creating content for folks that might be able to identify with the kind of person that I am and, you know, use the bits that I've learned over the years in their own classrooms. So if I was going to mention anything, I would say Rafe Esquith was like the biggest influence on my teaching career. I had, I did a whole interview with him uh, last year. And so I'm going to link that up here somewhere. And then watching teacher documentaries, I found I just liked more because it really gave me like I'm a visual learner, and so I like to see what's in someone's classroom, what it looks like when it's going down. And I made a video about that, I'm gonna link up here also now, about the my favorite teacher documentaries that I made last year. I wish, I seriously wish that this platform existed when I started teaching. Oh, I, mi I missed, I missed a question. Can you describe a time that you made a mistake as a teacher, learned from it, and applied what you learned later on? I think one of, and I've never talked about this before, but. I think one of the biggest mistakes I made as a first year, second, third year teacher, like in the beginning, signing up for too much stuff. I feel like when you go for that first job interview and you think that like you're getting closer and closer, like you might get the job, you, you might be the one that they want to hire, you're willing to do anything. So when I started teaching, I signed up to teach Shakespeare, like a whole course on Shakespeare. That was okay. Like, like I felt like I was prepared for that. But then I was asked to do journalism to, and to write the school newspaper. I don't know anything about writing a newspaper. I never wrote for a newspaper in my life. I got an English because I like reading and I appreciate other people's writing, but not because I feel like I can document what's going on around the school or feel comfortable orchestrating the 20 or 30 kids that were in that class. I was asked to be in like the school band with the with the staff and that was difficult, like that was just like another time constraint. Asked to do after school programs and to teach in the drama program, which I'd never been in a play in my whole life. So anything the school needed, whether it was a chaperone or a volunteer for something, I just signed up for everything. And in retrospect, I think my first year I could have done with maybe like one thing extra. Your first couple of years are so much about like you finding your flow, you being in your classroom, you like figuring out your lessons and stuff that all those other constraints are really just taxing. You think you can do it on the front end. It's it's in a lot of ways like having a baby. Like when you first have a baby, you, you just don't realize how much time that's gonna take up and teaching is the same way. So I would, if I went back, I would do less stuff in the beginning and just focus on what's happening in my classroom. Question number four, if you could go to the, Oh, uh, this is kind of like, I just kind of answered this. If you could give your past first year teacher self some valuable advice about becoming a great teacher, what would it be? I kind of just answered that, but I would add on to not doing so much 
to doing more. And what I mean by that, even though I know that that's contradictory, I would have just cared less about whether or not something was going to fail. I think we, we overcomplicate things as teachers all the time. And we wanna have everything just right from the rubric to the decoration to the lesson. And you are putting all of your eggs in one basket. Instead of making something that's good, we focus on what's what could be perfect and then what that really does is trap you because when you spend all that time and energy on something and it doesn't work out then you feel like you feel like you have to see it through or like ride it out and you shouldn't like if something sucks and you're like a week two weeks in even a couple days in sometimes and it sucks just call it quits change flip the script redirect recalibrate what you're doing because that is what's going to like keep you getting excited it's going to get be what engages the kids and i think it's a good lesson for the students that like hey look this didn't work out i tried really hard i wanted this to be great but i'm not feeling it so let's let's shift our course and figure out something new that we can get excited about and go forward with that is there one thing that you're still insecure about or working to master in your teaching practice uh no there's many i think the the glaring one is having an online presence. It's weird, man. Like if you've not made a YouTube channel or something like that, making yourself vulnerable to all kinds of feedback, right? Like the narrative in my head, I, I'm constantly creating a narrative that is what is what are other people thinking? And they might not even be thinking any of this stuff. But I feel like the thought is, is that if you have a YouTube channel, you better be good enough to have a YouTube channel. Like you're good enough to put your ideas out there. You know, so I have to fight against that narrative all the time because really that's not what this is about. This is about me knowing that I know something and not that I'm great at anything, but that I'm willing to put out there the bits that I know to try and help other people. And if I can do that, then that's like a job well done. So that is something I'm insecure about. And I think the other thing is like, I just, I still get nervous. I still get nervous when I'm gonna try something new, when I don't think it's gonna work, when I take all of my students outside to do something and it could be a flaming mess. Or if somebody walks into my classroom, like what are they gonna think? Because, because my classroom looks the way that it does, I get a lot of visitors. And so what if I don't live up to their expectations? What if it's not as cool as they thought it was gonna be? What if the classroom looked better on camera or if I seemed more charming or something like that, that's something I have to fight against all the time too and just think like, who cares? I'm gonna do it anyway. But that is a constant in my life is like redirecting myself, slowing down and saying, I don't care what anybody thinks, I'm gonna do this anyway. And the older I've gotten, I think the better I've gotten at doing that. It doesn't come all at once. And anyone that tells you that they can do that, like they must be blessed. I don't have that gift. I have to constantly tell myself that this is all about the kids and that's what I'm gonna do it for and to not care what other people think about what I'm doing. So question at the end here that's sort of rolled up into that last question is, how am I working to improve myself this year? And how can I make my goals measurable? I have a couple of things I'm working on. My vocab has long been something that's like a weak point in my classroom. And this year I really wanna firm that up. I wanna make it meaningful and I wanna make it fun, but it's figuring out the best way. So if you have a best practice for a vocab, like please leave it in the comment section below or shoot me an email at realrapwiththereynolds at gmail and I'd love to hear your ideas. And the other thing is, is getting more interesting people in front of my students. I think that it's such a good idea to put other folks that are experts in things in front of your students instead of acting like the expert all the time. And I think it just makes it more fun too, right? Like I like this idea that my students could show up at the class every day and they never know what's gonna happen. Maybe there's bubbles, maybe there's a dance party, maybe there's cereal, maybe we're doing a new project, maybe we're in groups, maybe we're laying on the floor listening to music, maybe we're going outside, maybe we're setting fires with magnifying glasses. And don't do that on your windowsill because I'm saying I did that this year, but it's, New subject. I love that idea of like, you just don't know. It makes your classroom more like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, except for the part where that kid got sucked up. All right, a lot of bad things happen to kids in that movie. That's not a really good example. It kind of makes it a more magical place where you're just not sure what awesome thing is going to happen today. And I love that. This year is definitely having more folks come in and speak to my students, having us go more places and meet people, just because I think it makes for a really meaningful learning and it makes your class magical. Who doesn't wanna be in a magical classroom? I do. And that's it, gang. If you look below in the comment section, I will have all of the people listed that are in this teacher tag. You can click on the next person and then go right to their channel and see what's going on. 
And if you have time, please check out Teachers Connect. I'll have that link below also. And share your ideas, your thoughts, your feelings, your concerns, and find help from someone that actually knows because they're in the classroom. That's it, everybody. Peace.